Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Doing something a little different today. We got a guest hire in the shop again. And uh, today we got Jack Fields with us in the shop. Jack um, has brought out a new line of dubbing that we really like or really excited about. It's called Electric Wool. Um, he's going to talk a little bit about it here and tie a couple of his flies with us today. We're going to have a couple videos that will be coming out sh showcasing his materials. So uh, Jack, tell us a little bit about why you come up with it. Well, how you doing? What I wanted to do was come up with a dubbing that wasn't completely flash. So what I did was I dubbed in just enough flash that it would give you sparkle, but not so much that it looked basically like a little Christmas tree. And that the... the the ice wing I have in here are two dark ones to offset the tan color. And I just basically wanted something that for low clear water and for those times that too bright a fly was just too bright a fly, this would work out a little better. So uh, what fly are we going to tie here on this one? Uh, we're going to tie a little streamer on a, a little single hook streamer. So what are we starting with? We are going to start with some black barred gold variant zonker strips from Hairline. Okay. And your hook in this one is a partridge. What size hook have you got? That's a number four. Okay. Um, you can tie it on, uh, we carry 2557s. The difference is that it has a, from Daiichi, the difference would be an upturned eye. This has a straight eye. But uh, you're just tying some, with some black thread to start it out here. And then, then you're going to tie in your zonker strip. That's correct. And I wanted... This black thread was my, in case I broke my other thread, thread. <laughs> so, so we're going brown thread. Yeah, we're going to go back to, we're going to go brown thread. That other spool is my emergency. In case I break it, I can just reach over and grab that and we can stay fluid with the, so, with the sounds video. Sounds good. So what I'll do is I'll, I start off with some ginger marabou. And generally, I'll cut the very tip of it off just to get rid of that stem. Because I think once you lose that stem, you get the longer fibers. You get the longer fibers and more freedom of movement without that main stem in the middle of it. And what I like to do, any size hook that you're tying with, whether it's a nymph hook, dry fly hook, or a streamer hook, you can use the shank, the hook gap, as a reference. So if you're looking to get some regularity in your ties as far as size goes, you'll always have the same, basically the same size fly. That way you'll get a good, you know, a, a good size comparison with each fly. So with this one, I just take it and go from the eye and just go a little bit further back than the bend of the hook. And I'll take and just transfer my fingers to that point, which will be my tie-in point. And I'll just tie that in. Right there. <clears throat> At the point of the hook shank, where it just starts to round over, you want to stay just to this side of that so that way your materials don't start to fold down over the hook if you tie onto that. So we'll just tie this in up on the shank. Just come along like that and get that tied in. What you want to do is try and keep good thread pressure so you get a nice tight tie. Then you come back to your tie-in point. Now what we're going to do is we'll take the, the rabbit strip. And a lot of strip, they'll have from the end of the strip to where the hairs stop, that'll be a difference. There'll be a different length because some is just longer than others. 
So that really is what is going to give you the length of your fly, this overhang. So what I like to do is I'll get on this particular fly, I'll bring the end of the, rat, the hide just before the end of the marabou. And then we'll have that much more overhang of the marabou for the rabbit where this strip ends. And what you can do, you can either keep wetting your fingers. To make rabbit behave, you can wet it. Now see how it all stays out of your way? And that'll, that'll aid you in getting this tied down without it without it fighting you. It'll fight you if you, if you without don't. Without you trapping too much hair. Exactly. See, now that'll stay out of the way for us. So what I will do is I'll come over one time like that. What you want to take care of is when you're wrapping the rabbit hide on, even though you're holding it, if you just kind of take a wrap and keep your pressure on it, what, it, what it'll do, it'll, it'll roll on the hook on you. So what I like to do is once I get it tied into the point I want it tied in at, with one wrap, I'll come up and give a straight up pressure and come down like that. Keep, I'm keeping pressure on the thread the whole time. So, so you're getting down pressure instead of side pressure on your rabbit strip. Exactly. Now I come past it, two turns, keeping pressure on your thread. Just do a half hitch quick. Now that's not going anywhere. You're nice and tied down. You didn't have to use a ton of wraps, and it's, it's not going to go anywhere on you. It's secured, so we're good to go there. Now what I like to do on this one is invert the hook. I forgot my clip. We're going to build the belly of the fly. And what I'll do with this dubbing is you don't really need a whole lot to get the effect we're looking for. And this wool is very translucent in the water. When this gets in the water, it'll kind of, not swell, but it'll fluff out. And that gives you the translucency of a bait fish, which is what we're, what we're looking for. So I'll kind of take it, and you can take your hook or your scissors and let them open back up. And that makes a little V opening in this dubbing. And you can just take that and let it slide right past the hook just a little bit. And I'll show you why I do that once when uh, we get a couple of steps further. Then you just tie that in. And what another thing, you can, a little trick you can do is this finger here, the middle finger. Before I start putting pressure on, and since I'm using my fingers to hold this end of the dubbing, you can take your middle finger and just touch right there. And that'll keep that that'll keep that dubbing in place and not let it roll on you. And then you're nice and trapped down. So I'll snip that off. A couple of wraps for tying in there, and then I'll take what I just cut off. And then what I'll do is I'll stop the ends of this dubbing just short of the end of the dubbing that we just previously tied in. And what that gives you is a feathered, like this. Right. So instead of being a block, what you end up with is a taper. Is a taper on your stomach, and we're actually creating the profile of the bait fish, which is what this is is what we're looking to imitate with this tie. You just do a couple more. Just kind of fluff a little bit of it out so you get like, so it's not too much of a, a taper being a bait fish. You know, you, again, you just put this down here and stop it just before the other. Bring that on. And then we'll do one more and then that, we're going to be done with the belly at this point. 
And right now, where we're at is actually going to be the tie-in point for the rabbit on top. So you're about an eye or two back, two eyes back probably. About two eyes back, that's yeah. correct. So now we bring it back up top. Now you can see, see that taper that we have formed for the stomach and going up into the back section of the bait fish. Without even having to mess with it, we built our taper into it as we were tying the fly and it's kind of kind of handy. Yeah. Okay, don't mind what your rabbit looks like because it's wet. Just take that and brush it forward. What I like to do is I take a little comb and comb on that and that puts everything back to the way we wanted it. Now we'll just get the rabbit off the top of the strip. And what you can do is you see how the thread is here and the fur actually ends a little bit before or beyond where we're tying it in. Nothing wrong with that. That'll just give you a little more body in your wing. If you want, you can give two turns there. Then pinch this down, keeping thread pressure on your thread where you're tying in your zonker strip. And when I'm doing this, I'm using my bobbin to create the pressure to keep the tension on the thread right, I see all that. the time. And then once you knot it down, you can let it go and you're, you're good to go. Right. What you can do, cut this off, try to cut it off on like an angle. So when you tie this in, you'll get a taper versus a drop off that you're that you'll find yourself trying to make up for right. with thread wraps. So there is really the rear half of Yeah, that's got a great profile already. Now what we end up with is along the hook shank we'll have you can see the edge of the zonker strip. So what I like to do is I'll hide that with a little bit of CDC. And if any of you have ever heard of Mark Pettijan, he has a set of tools called the Magic Tool. I use it constantly and have been for the past 17 years. It's a very, very nice item. I find it useful in many, many ways. And I'm going to show you just one of those ways right now. So what you do is you take your CDC feather and preen all the barbs out at a 90 degree angle like that so they're sticking straight up off. Look at this one. There we go. See how they're at a 90? That allows us to grab a hold of all of those barbs. And this clamp, you just take it, fold it right over, and that captures all your barbs. Then all you have to do, take a pair of scissors, cut it off, and then there you have your CDC barbs all nice and neatly trapped. But I want these in a clump because I'm not going to put it in a dubbing loop. So I'll take this little tool here. See how it clumps them all together nice and neat? And all we have to do is grab a hold of them like that. And all you're going to want to do is just hold them right there on the shank to cover side of the zonker strip. Now you see how that zonker strip is completely gone, camouflaged in, and we also get a nice tone change with the darker brown 
to the lighter top and bottom of the uh, rabbit strip and the fur. Nice little lateral line effect on it. Exactly. And tone changes are key in success with trout and other fish, honestly. Because, you know, nothing in the natural world as far as bait fish and or insects are just one color. So anything, any trigger points that we can build into our flies will help us on the stream to enjoy our time more on the water. And as a side note, you basically use 90 some percent of the feather when you're utilizing this tool. So I, I do recommend it. It's, it's really nice. You'll, once you have it, you'll find so many different ways to utilize it. So we take our next comp, just lay it right there. Do a soft wrap to encompass it since our other hand is busy holding it where we want it. And then that takes care of those guys. Now you can, I have to trim these couple little tags here, but you can tie these in to where you don't have to trim away tags. And if you're a thinking tire, as you're tying along, you want to notice these things in your tying. Any materials that you can tie on in a manner that you won't have to cut tags off from the eye will give you a cleaner head in the end. So now we got our CDC in hiding the side of the zonker strips. What, I, what we'll do now is we'll start building the head of the fly. Head. Yep. Yep. And I'm using old moss electric wool for the top. Just peel some of that off of there. And we can manipulate it. You just find find the piece that has what you're looking for nicely. You don't have to use a whole pile of it because we're doing it in sections. So, and what we want to do, we don't want the dubbing to come all the way to the back of the fly. We want to complement what we've already have tied in. And the top of the barring on our rabbit strip ends about here. So that's where we're going to want our dubbing to stop. So we don't hide what we've already tied in. So you get two securing wraps and then you leave it just like that. Bring it upside down and get our belly color. And you can prep that in the same way. You pull it. We don't want it. It doesn't have to be very long at all. You're, you're pulling it to align the fibers but not to... You want them aligned but not long and Ever exactly. done. Exactly. So we're lining them up. Now, keeping in mind our taper that we've already built in, we'll just come around like that with two wraps. Now, when you do this, as you're wrapping around, you're going to want to mind the dubbing that is the top of the hook and not trap that down. So you're going to want to Put your thread in that valley, your tie-in valley, so you don't trap it and crunch it down. So now once we have both of those, what we can do is on the hook, you can pinch a little bit of that off. So we maintain our temp our our taper. So you just take finger and forefinger or thumb and forefinger, you slide that back. And trap it down and then you can just take that and kind of tease it back past there okay so now we have the first part of the front of the fly 
I tied in the darker top with the lighter belly. Now what I like to do now here to give us more tone change is I'll take a little bit of the darker dub and just a little more of the lighter dub. And I'll take those two and I'll work them. And that's what I mean by working is I'll take it and I'll stretch it and pull it apart and I'm actually blending these in hand. And what we have is now a two-toned or three-toned dubbing. You're not actually trying to create a new color, you're trying to create a blended color. That's exactly right, Sean. And what we're doing is we're going to work in, we're putting this on top. So we're going to work this tone in on top and that's just a little bit too much. Yeah, I think that's one key to this fly is sparsity. Yes, because translucency is a wonderful thing in, in, in fly tying. You know, there's plenty of occasion where you cannot put too much on. I know that's one of my biggest mistakes is making things too big. And it's easy to do. Yeah. It's very easy to do. So now for the bottom, we'll just take the single belly color. in there with that I already know that's too long as you come forward with the dubbing you're going to be using increasingly smaller pieces again just so we don't override the taper we're building in moving forward okay so again as we wrap that we were taking and taking care of what is the top not to trap it, so we stay again in that valley of our tie in point. We bring it back up, we take our finger and thumb, we can take the thread out of the way, and you just grab it with both fingers, holding it back, and then you can tie that in. Now, and, and you should add, like, you're not actually tying it down when you pull it back, you're tying in front of it holding it in place. Right, right. What that does is if you were to tie it down, what will happen is you'll get that. You can do that on some things, but in this case, we don't, we're not looking for that effect. All we're doing is a little dam and giving us that head shape that we're, that we're going to be after for this. So now you see By blending those two dubbings for the top, we've given it a modeled look, which is also what the CDC and the lower yeah. dubbing will give us. Now we only have one more part to this besides the eyes and we're going to be done. We'll take some more of the dark dubbing, the old moss. Now I won't pull this apart because what I want I want this to have some length so it'll get all the way back to where we wanted the dubbing to stop earlier when we first started tying it on. So you just kind of preen this back, give it some good pressure, good pull pressure. See how that's kind of got it out of the way of the very end of the hook. We have a little bit of, of the hook left behind the eye and that's where we want to be. Two wraps. Now, what we'll do is we'll turn this upside down one more time. This is kind of the hot spot or the accent or the belly of the fish, bait fish. And I, I, I want to caution you that if you're going to do this, this is the point to where you it's very very easy to use too much. Matter of fact, that's right there what we're going to use. Too much meaning long because we don't want it to over overdo the tie. We just want it to, this is just an accent of color. We don't want it to command the fly. You're, you're in essence 
covering the gill part, not the belly. Right. We just want a little accent. That's all this is. Too much would be too much. Trust me. I've, I've worked it down to this. And I, I like this much. And what, what I like to do is where it's tied in back behind the eye, it's already splayed like that. So we get coverage from hook side, hook shank, around to hook shank in 190 degrees like that. What I'll do before I fold this over is I'll kind of just splay out what is on the other side of the thread too. So when we fold it over, it's already going to be splayed for us. So we thread out of the way, pull everything back, one, two, maybe three wraps just to get everything where we want it. And that right there, I, I, I like that. That came out nice. That's what we're after. So now that we're happy, get that marabou off of there. And this is a great, this Keller combination you're using here would be a great sculpin. Oh yeah, you're right. I agree. Great sculpin Keller. I mean, there's a lot of fish in the stream that are this color. That's right. It makes it a real universal yeah. tie just because of the color tones in it. So now what, I'll, I like, what we'll do, remember how we mixed the two before this last bunch we tied in? What you can do with this is take a comb and you comb this and stroke it. And what it'll do with that darker dubbing that's now on top of the lighter dubbing it'll blend it right on the hook and give you a dark to light flow from the top down to where it stops at the tie-in point. And now all we need to do is glue our eyes on. And it's amazing the difference in appearance that happens as soon as you put that eye on, it looks completely different. Yeah. It's just, it's amazing. It amazes me every time I do it. So I'm using six millimeter eyes from Fish Gull, they're, they're living eyes. And what I'll do is I'll use gel glue to hold it in place. And you only need a drop. If you, it's very easy to overdo it with the glue and the gel will help you stay in control of uh, how much you put on. And if you like, you can just stick it right to your finger where it's easy to grab. So it's already right there handy for you. And I'll drop that glue right at the point to where, remember where we tied in the CDC? That's where we're going to put our eye. And I found using something like a bodkin to push it on and hold it in place while the glue sets, five, ten seconds. In case you do get some bleed out from under the eye, it won't stick to your finger. And then when you pull your finger away, you also pull the eye away. It gets frustrating. Oh, uh, yeah. And you leave the mess on the eye. Exactly. But to, you can't see on the video, but literally the size of the do drop of the glue was about the size of the tip of his bodkin right there. That That's that, true. That's that, about that's all example. more glue. Yep, that's all you'll need. Once that sets, it, it's, then the, the other thing is you're setting it to the hook shank. You're not just gluing it to the materials. So you're getting a good set to something solid, and it'll last through some trout for you doing it that way so again I just kinda take it and stick it on my finger where it's handy now at this point what I'll do is I'll just kind of I look at this side where the eye placement is and then I'll keep my eye on the fly and this is just so your eyes are even and then before now that we got the glue there, before I put the eye on, I'll, I'll turn it around and get a real good idea of where I want it to go. Just so it's, 
I like them to be even as I can get them. And we just, again, hold it, press it, mild pressure, just to keep it down there. And then once that sets, you can preen it around a little bit. And you're ready to fish. Okay. That's a great little profile to a, to a bait fish. Um, you got the colors blended nice. It's really, really nice. And uh, all the material works to the benefit of you in this fly. That's why we really like this stuff and wanted to start carrying it in the shop. Um, anything you want to add to this fly, Jack? No, other than tie it on the end of a leader and get it wet. <laughs> It'll be a really good fly for those clear water conditions. And like in summertime, late spring, early fall. And generally in the fall when they're getting active, they'll they'll come right up after this thing. Yeah, that's a that's a great looking pattern. I can't wait to start swinging it myself. Um, if you're interested in anything, you can follow Jack. He's got a lot of social media outlets. Um, Living the Nymph. You can follow him on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, you know, if you need help finding him, hit us up here. We'll get you in touch with him. But uh, we're going to carry his dubbing here in the shop, and we're going to show you some other flies and how to use it, and to use this dubbing to your benefit so it's more than just a streamer dubbing. Um, thanks for joining us today, Jack. We really like this fly, and I'm glad you shared it with us. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me. All right. Have catch, a good time. Catch you next time. I'm Sean Holsinger. I'm Jack Fields.